looks so fine. But a woman you can smell bright as sunshine. She ain't got a room. She said, I deserve this. I have a couple questions. Can you work it, twerk it? Can you work it, work it? Yeah, yeah. Can you twerk it, twerk it? Yeah, yeah. Can you work it, work it? Yeah, yeah. Can you twerk it, twerk it? Yeah, yeah. Reaper back at your ass again, black at your ass again, and we're back doing it on another one. But first, we would like you to subscribe to the Reaper because we're doing good things here at Reaper and bringing good messages here at Reaper. And go to our website, jazzboatareaper.com, and support your main nigga on the trigger. All right, let's get started with the topic today. Is your woman a freak? Because I see a lot of fellas out there that don't know their woman is a freak, and you know, uh, they be having, you know, uh, confessions with her and thinking that she is a virtuous woman, but she's really a freak. And so we going to have this topic here today. And I got my man, Truth Teller, you know, here today. That was his music playing right there. And uh, he's going to be discussing some of these things, you know, uh, with me. That is your woman a freak. You know, uh, you know, that's the song Work It, Twerk It remix. And, um, you know, so number one, is she twerking? Does she, you know, uh, dance dirty when she goes out? You know, because some women, you know, they be twerking and, you know, dancing dirty, you know, when she goes out. And, you know, does she have mostly male friends? You know, because a lot of women say they don't hang around with females because they backstab us. You know, uh, they conniving, you know, um, and everything else. But, you know, uh, they expect us to accept them. The Reaper keep it 1,000, but they don't hang out with them. You know, if you catch a woman, you know, some women, not all women, you know, by herself, she will tell you how manipulative and how much of a backstabber some women is. So uh, does she have mostly male friends? You know, does she talk about her sexual proudness? And what she likes to do in bed, you know, because I see a lot of women talking about, you know, their sexual proudness and what they like to do in bed or whatever, you know, and, you know, they don't have no restrictions on that. And is she attracted, you know, uh, to male conversation, you know, a lot of times, you know, that she likes to be around males and male conversation and, you know, she really don't like to hang out with females. She doesn't have too many, you know, female friends or whatever and you know does she like to you know engage in sexual activity you know five or seven times a day sometime twice a day the reaper keep it 1000 you know because if she does you better watch out you know because you know she will get used to your penis and pretty soon it won't be good enough you know I mean I mean does the sex always have to be freaky you know, I mean, does she require, you know, uh, freaky sex every time you have sex? Because a lot of women do and, uh, you know, a lot of men don't know that, you know, your woman is a freak. So this is why we having, you know, this discussion or whatever, you know. Well, does she wear tight and revealing clothing all the time? You know, I mean, clothing that, you know, show off her buttocks. You know, and, you know, her cooch lines and everything and her breasts, you know, and it's all tight and revealing. You know, does she have on this type of clothing? Because if she does, you know, you may have a freak. And does she have tattoos more than one? You know, because, you know, some women have trap stat, trap stamps, as they say. But if she's got tattoos all over or whatever, you know, um... You know, that's the sign of, you know, you may have a freak too. And does she have a tongue ring? You know, some women be licking out their tongue. Ah, nah, you know, with the tongue ring. You know, um, saying that, you know, uh, this is what they like to do. It's a symbol of sucking penis. So if she has a tongue ring, you know, uh, you may be dealing with a freak there. And, uh, you know, does she always talk about a man's penis? You know, how good it is, how big it is, because some women engage in conversations like this all the time. And then they will tell, you know, uh, 
their sexual partner's proudness or how big his penis is or how uh, good it is, you know. Uh, does she stare at men like she's hungry for sex? Or letting him know, you know, he can tap it or he got action. They say, if you got eyes, you got action. That's what they said, you know. So does she do this, you know, when she goes out? This is, a, you know, shout out to all the fellas that don't know. Does she stare at a man like she's hungry? And does she walk around, you know, the house naked or sleep naked all the time? You know, like she's always just so hot and burning up, you know, because some women sleep naked all the time and they walk around the house like they just burn it up, like they just, you know, uh, can't get enough. And, uh, you know, I mean, does she ask, how does she look all the time? You know, when she get dressed, how do I look? How do I this, that, and the other? You know, how do I this, that, and the other? You know, because she's asking you how she looks all the time because she wants to know, you know, is it appropriate, you know, for other men? You know, I mean, if she's obsessed with it, you know. And so, does she take trips without you or have a girl's night out when she feels like it? Because... If she's taking trips without you, girls trips, or she's having a girls night out all the time, you know, uh, she could be cheating or wanting, you know, uh, attention of other men. The Reaper keep it 1000. So you got to watch out for some of these things, you know, because if you don't, your woman could uh, indeed be a freak, you know. You know, is she commenting on how good a man looks all the time? Oh, he looks good or that looks good and. Uh, you say, what you doing? Uh, uh, I was just looking at his suit and saying that, you know, that would look good on you or, uh, you know, he did look good or whatever. So is she always commenting on how good a man looks or whatever because that's the kind of man she's looking for or she's looking for, you know, something else, you know? I mean, and like I said, does she have a lot of male friends? That's a sign, you know, she can't get along with no females. You know, she's got males calling her all the time. Does she solve arguments, disagreements, or problems that you may have, you know, um, with sex? You know, I mean, does she, you know, give you a shot of that or, you know, give you some fellatio or, you know, some vagina? Because I had a friend that said that every time he had a problem and it was a deep problem with his woman that he was living with, you know, when she walked in, you know, she went down and dropped his drawers and, you know, sucked his penis. So, you know, um, I, I have to ask that question because a lot of women think they can solve, you know, different things with sex. And once the sex is over with, you know, uh, the problem is over with, you know, I mean, does she play naive to games men play? You know, uh, too much conversation with him, telling them, you know, you know, too much about herself, you know, where she works, what she does, what she likes, what's her financial status and everything else. You know, I mean, you know, um, does she act too friendly? You know, hugs, you know, when she see people, you know, kisses on the cheek or whatever, you know, because if your woman is too friendly with everybody, you know, you could have a freak. Now, without further ado, i like to introduce my guest, Truth Teller. What's up, brother? What's happening, man? You know, it's a nice sunny day where I'm at in this part of the country, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great feeling, man. Spring is near. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, the days is longer, the time done changed, and, uh, you know, we gonna, you know, get more sunshine, and, you know, that was, your, that was your song playing, man, you know, as my intro, and I, I really liked it, I really enjoyed it, man, you know, what made you come up with the ideal for that one? Well, when I was writing uh, music back in the day, um, me and this other artist, uh, she was a female artist, we got the original song to it, and um, I, would, I said, let me put a remix to it, because people like the original, and uh, I never got back to... Uh, getting her to uh, throw her verse on there and uh, even though she owe me a verse she knows she do but um, I didn't get her to throw the verse on there so I just kind of rolled it out like that and it never got completed and then I don't try to uh, I don't rap anymore like that so it, you know it just came up with it man it just when you're in that zone you just come up with different concepts yeah yeah you get creative like that 
you know, and you come up with different creative things. I've been checking out, you know, uh, some of your music, you know, and, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's on the one man. And, uh, I think you should keep doing it. You know, what do you think about this topic? You know, is your woman a freak? Have you, you know, ran into this kind of situation, you know, uh, with a woman or, you know, you know, somebody that has, you know, because where a woman, you know, she's always dirty dancing or you know she's always talking about her sexual proudness you know i mean or she's just too sexual she's got a lot of man friends and you know or you know she's too freaky or whatever or you know does she walk around the house you know naked or does you know uh she you know asks how she looks all the time or does she take trips without her man or you know you know, always commenting on how good a man looks and does she have a lot of male friends? I mean, have you ran into, the, you know, uh, these kind of things where you see brothers and they don't know really that they have problems in their relationship and they don't know where it's coming from or whatever. And they are very trustworthy of their woman, but their woman could be a freak. Have you ran into that? Of course. I mean, you look at what is it almost like three women to one man and so you just look at the numbers if you're going off it mathematically is that uh most women not all but most women are very insecure and so they're have insatiable needs for attention so they're always looking for attention i don't care if they are in a marriage or a relationship it doesn't matter. They love attention because attention caters to their emotions, and we know that they're born on emotion. And so when they do things to get that attention, it just somehow makes them feel um, more content about who they are because you could get a fine woman and everybody could tell her she's fine or whatever, but if she doesn't feel that way, She's not going to act accordingly to how a good-looking woman acts. She's going to do things to demand attention and uh, try to get it by any means necessary. Yeah, uh, there was uh, brothers. There's some brothers that say, uh, you know, uh, you may you rather get a you know a ugly woman than a good-looking woman because she gonna treat you better, you know, the Reaper keep it 1000 because a good looking woman is always caught up on her looks and you know, it's too much competition and there's always somebody shooting at her, you know, and you know, she's got a lot of options or whatever. But, you know, getting back to what you were saying that they crave attention or whatever, you know, we see that in the Steph Curry, you know, situation or whatever. So it doesn't matter you know what these men have because i always say if michael jordan could get a divorce or whatever where his wife didn't want to be with him mostly any man can but in the steph curry situation his woman actually came out and said that she wanted attention from other men like he get attention from women you know and he's a pro ball player or whatever you know uh she came out publicly and said this proving that you know she loves attention and that, you know, uh, she's an attention whore, the Reaper Keep It 1000. I mean, I don't know her to be sleeping around or whatever, but I mean, when a woman comes out and says this publicly, uh, they want other men to shoot at them. Uh, do you agree with that, brother? Yeah, I think most women, you know, crave attention. And it seems like Steph Curry's wife is more of his competitor than his companion because any woman that comes out and say that, that's kind of like a red flag. Um, I'm not saying it always means something, but most likely it does. And, you know, a woman is only going to give a man what she feels he's worth. So if she feels that he's not worth what she felt felt he was worth in the, initially in the beginning, then, you know, that's how things uh, end up going sideways in relationships and marriages. Yeah. Yeah, and I always say that too. A woman is only going to give a man what she feels he's worth. You know, if she doesn't feel that, you know, you're worth it, then she's not going to give it. So a lot of men be wondering why, you know, uh, a woman gave this other man so much or whatever and didn't give, 
you know, that same dedication to them because she doesn't feel you're worth it. You know, you may have more assets than him or whatever, but, you know, she may have been more in love with him or more into him. So she did more and she put herself out there more. I mean, do you think that I, I see a lot of women that, you know, put themselves out there and they run through relationships, man. And, you know, and when they get to be, you know, uh, 40 or 45 years old, uh, you know, when they looks fade up and everything and they got a couple kids, you know, uh, then they come up with all these standards or whatever with what type of man they want, what type of man they don't want or whatever, you know, and I always say this, you know, I mean, you done ran through your good years, you know, with a bunch of men or whatever and it didn't work out for you now you're going to come up with all these standards and you got baggage or whatever have you saw that oh yeah it seems like when they know that their stock goes down that it seems like they figure well now i'm older i'm more mature and i know what i want and stuff like that but they got a lot of miles and baggage on them and you know most men if he's a high value man he's going to be like well, this is not what I ordered when I tried to get at you 12, 15 years ago, you know? And for some reason, they have this belief that as they get older, that their stock appreciates when it really depreciates, and a man's stock appreciates as they get older. So it's, it's kind of like that cognitive dissonance um, belief, you know, that on one end, you know, you feel that when you were younger, you wasn't... Uh, talking when I was walking, but then as you get older and your stock goes down, now you want to have that conversation. So it's just that type of dichotomy, man, and, you know, a lot of women deal with cognitive dissonance, and so I just really feel that a lot of women just don't really know what they want. They go off their emotions a lot. Well, a lot of them, you know, I think that, you know, they go off, they, you know, they booty and they beauty when they're younger or whatever. And when they get to be older, they find out, you know, uh, they want, they want something else. You know, they want a man that, you know, uh, loves them for them and take them for them. And it's not about all of that. And then they want a good man because when they going off of their beauty and their booty, they will be, you know, subject to pick anything, you know, and anything that they like, they'll go with. They'll have kids by anybody uh, that they like, and it may not be a good dude at all. But, you know, I'm not saying all women, so I want to put the disclaimer in here, but some women. And then when they get to be older or whatever, they can appreciate a good man because, you know, they looks done faded a little bit or whatever. And then they, you know, they older and they wiser and they will respect, you know, more what a man, you know, brings to the table, but they may be done played they self, you know, like you said, you know, because they was a freak when they was younger and they got a lot of, you know, mileage on them, you know, I mean, it ain't no compression in the engine no more, you know, the drive line done fell out, click, 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 and, you know, in the car just, you got to press on the accelerator a little bit harder, you know, to get where you want to go, and, you know, um, brothers, you know, tend to want something with some compression in it, the Reaper Keep It 1000, something that's got low miles, that ain't been used up, you know, that don't come, you know, with a lot of maintenance problems or baggage or whatever, you know, the Reaper Keep It 1000, so, you know, uh, you know, these type of women have a hard time, you know, even when they get to be old or whatever, you know, of, you know, getting a decent man, so they tend to turn into cougars and go younger, and they say that they start to pay for penis because they say that, you know, I'd rather pay for it, you know, than to, uh, you know, uh, go through all the rigors of what a man want me to be in all of the six and seven. So they, they tend to go younger, you know, so a, a lot of them when they get to be younger and they don't mind paying because they've played themselves, you know, even when they was older. Have you ran into that? Yeah, that seems like that goes on in today's time where you see a lot of older women dating younger men and a lot of it has to do with because they figure, well, if a man, a younger man has testosterone and, you know, he can hit that booty still, you know, real tough and good because let's not get it twisted, man. Most women, man, you know, they want you to grab their hair, you know, and just pound them to death, man, real hard and good, man. And uh, they... 
they, they, they claim that they don't, but that's what they mostly do. And so they figure when a man gets older, like he might have more substance, but when it comes to in the bedroom, you know, he's not as vibrant and not as like he was when he was younger because the testosterone has, and age and attrition has kicked in. So they date younger people, but it's also too, they know that their stock is not as high as it used to be either. So there's a lot of things that go on with that, and it puts a, a high-value man that's a little older that's in his late 40s and 50s, it puts him in a quandary because he has to realize that she might have a, a high history past, and even though she may have changed, it's still going to be in the back of his mind that if he sees any signs of that, and it might not be so, but it, it could cause some problems in the relationship. Yeah, I think that, uh, but I think that the older a woman get, you know, uh, she don't, she, she, she say she values the substance of things or whatever, but a lot of these old women is freaks and they, you, you right, they, they value penis over, uh, substance or whatever, you know, and this is why they go younger or whatever, even though they got a lot of mileage on them and, you know, and they say that a man's testosterone that went down or whatever, but a lot of these women, you know, uh, you know, like I said, they don't have no compressions in their engines, you know, like they once did or whatever. And, you know, it's not as, you know, um, the engine don't run as hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Reaper keep it 1,000. It don't get you, revved up. You can, and, a, hmm? you, can have a, you can have a Rose Bentley outside, but if you got a Yugo engine... <laughs> <laughs> Like or a bad engine, or a bad engine, you know, or the drive line that fell out of it. Yeah, yeah, through a rod, you know. Through a rod is ticking up the hill, and they got no compression. You know, so I mean, a lot of them don't realize that they done play they self, you know, in that department too, because they have a lot of things going on, you know, with women, you know, with the feminine you know, uh, thing, you know, that go on with women and they go through the change, you know, and everything. Menopause, menopause. Menopause, yeah, like, yeah. they can't have kids and, you know, um, you know, they have different things going on, you know, uh, with them, you know, that affects their sex, li their sex life too. So it ain't just, you know, men or whatever, but, you know, a lot of women don't realize this and you know they'll go get another man because a younger man because you know i mean it takes a little bit more fuel <laughs> to get where they want to go because <laughs> <laughs> you know the engine ain't tuned up like it once was you know i mean it takes a little bit more fuel it sucks down more fuel to get where it you know needs to go so uh they tend to uh, have a younger man or whatever, you know. But they still want, you know, I believe they still want, uh, like we was talking about, you know, on the last show. And go watch the last show. Uh, it's uh, should women, you know, uh, date. Should people date, you know, in the workplace. And uh, we got that show up. But it was, it was like we was talking in that show, uh, you know, we're saying that, um, you know, most women... You know, the, I mean, you know, they like men, you know, uh, you know, they like they, they want men with some substance or whatever. You know, they want a relationship, you know, but they want, you know, to still have their independence, you know, and everything. You know, they want, you know, the substance of a relationship and for a man to pay bills and for a man to, you know, be there with them. But they still want, you know, their independence, you know, like we was talking about the girls night out, the trips, you know, they don't want a man constantly, you know, asking them about their doings or where they've been or where they going or whatever. You know, they want that still that independence, you know, to roam around and, you know, do whatever they want to do. But they want that, you know, that um, security of a relationship. Have you saw that? prevalent uh, in today's time, too, where they kind of want their cake and eat it, too, so to speak, where, you know, they want to do what they want to do, and then when they don't feel frisky and dotty dotty kind of, they, they want to come back and say, oh, I got the good man at home, 
and live the good home life, but every once in a while when they want to step out, now we're equal. You know, where I have my independence and I want to do what I want to do. And usually when they get older, it's almost like, and I'm not saying all women, I'm just saying a lot of women, they want the nice guy, but they wanted the bad boy, you know, when they were in their prime. So it's just a lot of confusing things that, you know, you never know what's going on inside a woman's head. So if you talk to them on three different emotional days, you might get three different answers. So you just never know. True that they operate off emotions, but a lot of them, you know, uh, they had the bad boy or the buster, you know, that I call it when they was younger or whatever. But even when they get a good man or whatever, they still be trying to want the good man to accept some of the things they used to do with the buster. And it just don't go down like that, you know, in most cases, you know, I mean, they have to learn because you have to be taught, you know, if you haven't been taught you know, how to treat a man. And a lot of these women ain't been taught how to treat a man. They've been taught how to control a man because they want to talk to a man and act like a man is, you know, their child instead of their man. I talked to this woman that was next door to me or whatever, and she says that, you know, her man can not barely even go to the store without her. And when he's outside, she's outside. And, you know, um... Uh, you know, well, she said he better come straight home for work and she check his pay stub and everything like that. And, uh, you know, she makes sure that he's where he's supposed to be. And I told her, you know, uh, when we was having conversations, I said, well, that's your man. That's not your child. You know, I mean, you know, uh, I've already had a parental figure, but a lot of these women, they want to treat, you know, their man like their child. And... You know, they don't respect their man like that. They want to control their man instead of, you know, working with their man and respecting them as a man. Have you ran into that? Oh, yeah. A lot of women, they either want two things. They either want to treat the man like a child or they want the man to be the daddy figure that they never had. And that means that he runs the show. And when men doesn't step their game up and put their foot down like they're supposed, like they're supposed to, and you get situations like your neighbor where he's like the little boy and she's dictating everything, but in her mind she thinks she's delegating, but she's really dictating because that's a role reversal. So usually if you don't run them, then they'll run you. So you have to pick and choose your poison, and then you got the virtuous women that knows how to work with a man and treat a man accordingly to way, and she gets treated accordingly to how she should get treated. So those type of women will never be happy because I don't care if he's uh, the nicest guy, whatever. When he's not getting treated like a man, it's going to eventually uh, come to a head because we're just not born that way. We could take a lot of stuff off that way, but after a while, it just comes. the pimple comes to a head where you got to bust it. Well, you know, some of these women, they think, you know, just because, you know, they work in a certain position or, you know, they bring it home some bacon or wearing the purse strings or whatever, they feel like they can act and treat a man any kind of way and do any kind of thing. And I always contend that even the buster that's taken off of you, he will be, you know, cheating with a woman that's treating him more like a man because, you know, uh, that's, that's what a man wants and desires. They don't want no big mouth woman coming home you know, uh, telling him where he can go and what he can do. And, you know, he got a curfew when he come in and he can't even go to the store without her unless she's accusing him of cheating or doing anything. It's just an insecure woman, you know, and maybe she be doing some things on the side. This is why she's accusing him. But, you know, uh, some of these women, you know, they, they treat their man, you know, more of a kid than they treat their own son. They don't ask their son, you know, things like they ask their man and expect him to uh, abide by things and, you know, he'd be right in the household with them that they expect their man to do or whatever. So a lot of people, they have these rules and these regulations for their man, but they don't have them for themselves or whatever, because if he has rules and regulations, you know, with some of these women that's independent or whatever, or think like this woman next door or whatever, you know, she would say he was trying to control her 
And, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, women like this, they mistake, you know, uh, control uh, for respect, you know, the Reaper Keep It 1000, you know. I mean, there's a thing of respect and then there's a thing of control. And if you're trying to control a man's every move or whatever and you taking his checking his pay stub, that is control. That is not respect, you know, the <laughs> Reaper Keep It 1000. Respect is something you both can agree upon, you know, that's what I feel like respect is, because if one party don't agree upon it, then how can you have respect? Respect is where, you know, we both agree upon it, like, I'm not going to do a certain thing, and you're not either, you know, the Reaper Keep It 1000, but, you know, there's different rules, you know, for, um, you know, different relationships, and different, you know, men and women, but, what I want to ask you is, is, uh, you know, getting back to, is your woman a freak? Do you think a woman should have too much conversation with a man? You know, you know, telling them, you know, about themselves and where they work and, you know, what she does and the fina financial status, you know, with, you know, some of these men that they don't know. Um, are you talking about a single woman or a, a woman that's in a relationship? Woman? Because it's, 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 is your woman a freak? Oh, so. okay. Well, no. I don't think that they should have that type of dialogue uh, with certain men because, uh, you know, you got certain men that are, if they see any type of weakness in that woman, then they're going to act accordingly to the weakness. So if she's in a relationship or marriage, no, she should not have those uh, discreet type of conversations with another man, you know, because eventually... If she gets comfortable and that guy caters to her emotions, and even if the relationship is going somewhat good, there's still a chance that she can slip up because she's born on emotion. If, she, if she's not a strong woman, now she's a strong woman. She's going to have those type of conversations anyway. So if she don't, if she's a strong woman, she's not going to have those type of conversations anyway. So I would say no. Yeah, me too. If she's a strong woman, you know, uh, she's not going to have those conversations about, you know, telling a man too much about them. And, you know, uh, she's looking for something at that point and, you know, where she works and what she does financially. And she's not going to be looking at him like she's hungry or he got action or, and, you know, she's not going to be too friendly, you know, with hugs and, you know, so-called kisses on the cheek or whatever, because this lets other men know that they have action or whatever, you know, the Reaper Keep It 1000. She's throwing out them signs to them that, you know, my relationship ain't too stable and I'm a freak. <laughs> and if you want to get with me, you know, on a side piece bar or side bar or whatever, you know, you can. And men recognize those signs because they start telling them, you know, where they work at and what they do and how much money they have and you know, and they start, you know, giving, you know, uh, hugs and everything like that, you know, because they are susceptible to games. So, you know, uh, uh, fellas, you got to look out for this or whatever. And, you know, if a woman in a relationship, if she's in a relationship with you and, you know, she's wearing her clothing too tight or revealing, you know, where every time she step out of the house, you know, uh, she's in, she's got a skirt up to her throat, you know, the Reaper keep it 1000, you know, I mean, and some of you, uh, men don't be checking that or whatever, you know, uh, when a woman step out of the house, you know, with a skirt up to, uh, her throat, does it matter what her outer appearance looks like? You know, uh, um, if you can judge whether uh, she's a freak or not, I mean, like revealing clothing, she got tattoos, a tongue ring, you know, stuff like that, you know, I mean, does that matter? Yeah, I would say so, because I think your attire definitely matters, because if you see a cop in a uniform, right, or you see somebody in a uniform and he got a belt and a gun and he looks like a cop for security, he's going to be a cop for security, so... If she puts on a whole uniform, she's going to be looked at as a whole, whether she's one or not. But I think in most cases, in today's time, that a, a real woman doesn't have to dress like that uh, to get looks and attention and, 